everybody, Greens, and welcome to another episode of Minister Mastery. And I thought today we'd talk about status epilepticus because we had a patient come in recently with that, and you'll get a little video of our airway management of that patient clipped onto this. Status epilepticus is an important condition to treat because there's an urgency in its treatment. Its definition is that you'll have two or more seizures without complete resolution between seizures, or you can have more than 30 minutes of seizing activity. It's very important to control the seizures early because the longer they go on for, the more refractive they are to treatment and the greater the chance of mortality. So a seizure lasting less than an hour has a mortality of about 2.7% associated with it, whereas seizures greater than one hour, the mortality increases above 30%. Um, the way we approach these patients is we get them to a recess cubicle, make sure we manage their airway, their breathing and their circulation as we normally would. The treatment is uh, benzodiazepines um, and phenytoin. And really the benzodiazepine of choice that we use is midazolam. So we can give them an intramuscular dose of 0.2 milligrams per kg um, and that will control most seizures and will phenytoin load these patients. So in phenytoin, we're using about 20 milligrams per kilogram. So that's about a gram. We give it over an hour because one of the main side effects of phenytoin is that it causes hypotension. It doesn't matter if the patient's already on phenytoin, there is no harm done to the patient by, phen uh, by phenytoin loading them above their normal dose. Okay, it's fine. We've got bloods, we'll get a 12 lead. Um, if, his if his dilantin's low, then we'll load him with phenytoin. Do we know when his last seizure was? Did the ambulance say? October. Is this another seizure? Give him some more Medaz. Give him another two and a half of Medaz. Yeah. I got it. Two and a half just now. Going in as we speak. Right. Okay, in. It doesn't look like a seizure. One. No, just this left arm. What you might tend to find with these patients is that there's a predisposition um, for patients without epilepsy to be coming in with status epilepticus and it tends to occur in the extremes of age. So about 50% of your patients with status will be children and a significant number will be over the age of 60 years of age. So you need to understand your dosages. Um, if the seizure is refractory and it doesn't stop, you then need to take further action. And really the mainstay, as I said, is going to be the benzos. You can try benzodiazepam rectally in children, although that has a slow ab absorption and midazolam is preferred. As we increase the doses of benzodiazepines, we tend to be faced with an airway problem in these patients. And so in many cases, we take control of the airway and we use a neuromuscular blocker and we'll use some barbiturates and we'll intubate the patient. The care then becomes that if we're using a neuromuscular blocker, you've got to be very careful that we're masking the tonic-clonic activity of the seizure, but that there may be still neuronal seizure activity going on. That can also occur if we've given benzodiazepines and you've seen the tonic-clonic component of the seizure stop. But the patient can still be tachycardic and if you look at their eyes they may have a deviation of the eyes to one side. You've got to be very careful with these patients because they're still seizing neuronally but they don't have the, uh, the tonic-clonic component of that seizure. All of these patients that progress and are refractory will need to have high dose benzodiazepines, they'll need to be uh, intubated, paralysed and they'll need an ICU environment obviously. So that's status epilepticus, you need to get control of it very, very quickly uh, and you need to use optimum doses of drugs. This is Peter Cass, here's another week, I'll see you next time for another talk. Bye for now.